Hello, my name's Helen Keen Dyer and I've been asked to put together a short video of my experience of using an online classroom. I've used this type of technology for quite a few years now, particularly in a past life where the online classroom was used to connect staff and volunteers from across Queensland to support active and engaged learning. I'm keen not to advocate a particular branded product so long as the product affords the sorts of opportunities to learn that a straight video conferencing platform does not. So with that said, one of the biggest tips I'd have early on is to really get to know the technology, understand its affordances and become familiar with what participants are experiencing. Often I'd have two computers logged in, particularly in the early days, one as a moderator and one as a participant so that I could monitor the experience on both ends. This tip and others can be found in the resources available in the staff portal, for example the 10 top tips series and also in the Moodle uh, for staff help area. I was also careful to start simple and build up and this was important for both myself as I learnt the technology and also the participants. If you're unable to operate the technology or the participants can, can't contribute in a meaningful way because of technology difficulties, then learning is potentially compromised. So be careful with all the bells and whistles, particularly early on. For today, um, I have just popped together a, a selection of slides from, from various sessions that I've um, run and, and we will explore some of the um, activities. So uh, knowing the technology allows me to plan my sessions and importantly I like to plan a series of sessions which brings participants along a journey. So building up the types of interactions and engagement activities within the online space. So early on that might be quite simple interactions and you, depending on your context and your learners and all of those sorts of things it might be as simple as popping a, a map up on the screen and getting them to use their whiteboard tools which are just to the left of um, the map, picking up the little star pointer and popping it on the map approximately where it is they think they're located. You might also ask them to introduce themselves in, via the audio to turn, top, turn the talk on, introduce yourself or you might get them to pop something in the chat as I've done down there. You might also just start very simply by asking everybody to give you a smiley face and the emoticons are a really powerful way to get a sense of how people are going on the other end. So I encourage um, participants to use those and when I see the confusion, for example, I know that it's time to, to, to stop and check in and, and see how people are going. The other sorts of things that I find quite useful depending on the sorts of sessions I'm running um, is the polling and that's nice and easy um, to set up a poll. You can do yes to no to multiple choice. You might pop a question or a statement on the whiteboard and get them to respond by clicking the poll. Then you simply publish the results of that poll to the whiteboard and that's forever part of your recording. It can be sat under the, the question for example so it's all nice and together. You can also have nice visual graphics which stimulate discussion and stimulate people um, to provide you with a response. So it doesn't always have to be an audio lecture which is pretty much what, what this is, just me talking to the, to the system. It's about getting people to engage with you and to engage with one another. So be very mindful of how much you as the facilitator actually um, do talk because there is a lot of capacity for people to engage with the technology. You may want to get people to write on, on a whiteboard all together so you brainstorm um, the, the activity. You might want to pose, um, for example, we were considering policies, procedures and frameworks in education um, and you might want to break people into smaller groups. So take your big group and each group will consider part of that, that bigger discussion. So you could just create some breakout rooms. 
we call them groups we've got three groups so we'll create three breakout rooms and then you can um, divide your participants into those groups obviously that's a little more advanced functionality so you just need to 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 think about um, you know how you go about doing that nice and smoothly each group has their own whiteboard and the audio is confined to that space so you could get each one of your groups to consider one of those questions then you can bring the whiteboard from those groups back to the main whiteboard and they can talk to it just like you would do in small group work you may also, um, if somebody's talking, for example, we were talking about policies and procedures in education uh, and we're talking about a discipline context and um, somebody raises a website or somewhere that you may like to go for information, you can actually go out to the World, World Wide Web and bring that information straight into the session. So if we think about um, accreditation standards, for example, you might go straight to EITSL. Um, you can look at those accreditation standards, think about those accreditation standards um, there and then. You could also, if you were pre-planning that session, you could have those um, standards ready and you can just share your desktop, bring those standards up, and that's what people would see. Then bring everybody back to the whiteboard and you can continue on with your session. So obviously that's just a little snippet and there's some of um, the activities that you may be already using or you may want to think about using and, and there are many many options. This is just a very short snippet. I guess it's about thinking about your learners and, and the content and your approach in your course or your philosophy or your learning design for your course and thinking about the technology and how you can join those things up. So thank you very much and I hope um, you found this interesting.